My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome back as you join me once again here on Transport Fever 2. We're starting today aboard the Herne Bay Planks Freight Train as it heads to the newly christened George Stevenson Station. Now, I've named that station prior to uh, the release of the previous episode when I did call for naming suggestions. So, don't believe that this means that your comments are not being taken on board or your name suggestions are being overlooked. I'm just recording this before that one has gone live and I wanted something a little bit better than Hearn Bay East, at least as a temporary placeholder potentially. So yes, this freight station has been renamed the George Stevenson Station and as you can tell there's been some modifications made. Using the assets over to the right there, I have put a little shunting yard in with a, a shunting locomotive and some wagons. I've also connected up all of the various platforms that are at this station into the East Coast Freight Line. So now all of the platforms are serviceable for any future lines we may look to implement. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be continuing on with the freight maneuvers that we started previously. Obviously we did set up this line which we are currently sat on, bringing up the planks to this station where they are then ferried on into the machinery factory just a little short journey away and hopefully by the end of today's episode we will also be bringing in some of the steel into this station as well so that machinery factory can then start producing the machines and while we may not, got, uh, we may not get them shipped out in today's episode at least the machinery factory should kick into full production. So let's hop off of this train here, we'll leave it to continue about its merry business and we'll head up here. So our steel mill is located just here so we're not too far away from our east coast main line. We already do supply coal to the steel mill but we don't supply any iron ore. And in terms of the iron ore, we have two options available to us. We have an iron ore mine here, just near Barton. And in fact, I'm going to rename that to Barton Iron Ore Mine. It seems more fitting. It's on the outskirts of the village we constructed. Or we have this iron ore mine here outside of Epping. Before we do get started, I wanted to point this little modification out to you. This passenger line that we set up to serve this custom village, I have extended the, the line so it now runs through the station at Barton, heads down the hill and towards the riverside, and this is where I will construct our next village using the lessons that I've learned from constructing Barton, so hopefully this village will end up being a little quieter than uh, what we see over here in Barton, which is quite insane the amount of people that are travelling via this station here. It's not quite what I had intended it to do but it's, it is what it is. We can't really change it now because it would involve trying to find out or trying to locate all of those plaid magneteers that are scattered in all the various buildings throughout Barton and it would just take far too long. So we're just going to leave Barton as it is. It's a it was a first attempt and we've learned lessons and hopefully the next one will be more successful. However, that is all for a future episode. So let's get back to uh, the freight game, shall we? So we will need a station somewhere around here. Now we do have access to our East Coast main line quite readily, as we can see. Do we want to have the station straddle the main line? sort of what we've done here with the George Stevenson station. Again, name is only a temporary one. If anybody can think of anything better, please let me know and I will go ahead and change it. Although, of course, you may have already done that in the previous episode. Or, do we want to have a station that is separated from the main line with lines that branch off and run into the station? Likewise, over here at the Epping Ore Mine, we do have this this line that connects the east coast and the west, I say east coast, the eastern and western freight corridors, they're not coastal lines. So do we want to straddle this link line or do we want to have a station that sits separate? 
I think for both of these we will have separate stations that are away from the line so the lines will just have to branch off do what they need to do and then head back onto the designated uh, main line so if we make a start well the best place to make a start would of course be the the Epping iron ore mine just here in fact before we do that I've just noticed this road here it is still a uh, an old style road so I'm just going to upgrade this while we're in the area just to get that looking a little bit tidier and a little bit more modernized there we go oh no didn't do it there we go okay so we want a station over here now I do believe we only have one consumer which is the steel mill so we don't need all that many platforms here and in fact I might just go for a single a single platform we want it to be as long as possible by default 320 meters I'm just going to delete that road there actually it's just remove that we can reposition the roads later on and if we had our station set like that we could quite easily connect it into this connection line here we would then pass through this station and we'd probably end up reworking how this station is laid out so we'd have it similar to the George Stevenson station where the main line passes through the middle and the platforms they all branch off from the main line of course that's all for the future it's not something we need to concern ourselves with today what we need to concern ourselves with today of course is connecting this to our well this is not the east nor the west coast this is the connection line between the east and west coast we don't again I keep calling it coast that's because obviously for those of you who live in the UK you'll know about the East Coast main line and the and what have you so it's just a force of habit but when you say when you talk about the Eastern line for me I just call it the East Coast main line because that's what I've grown up with that's what I'm used to uh, so you'll have to just bear with me on that one uh, it won't be the last time I call it the East Coast main line or the East Coast freight line um, but yes that's why it's just force of habit from being in the United Kingdom but enough about that what we're gonna do is just very simply bring this line in like this uh, it's nothing too fancy going on here but of course we are making sure that when the trains are coming into this station they're not blocking in any train that may be waiting to leave the station so the trains will come in and they can wait here and the one that is currently loading still has a free run to come down here to you know continue its journey and head to the uh, to the steel mill so that's simple enough we don't need much more than that we don't have any lines active down this stretch of track at the moment but we will supply the signals so if we do have trains coming down here between the east and west freight corridors then this junction has protection from both sides after that the trains will simply pass straight on through here they can use obviously they will they will be using this uh, do we want another set of blocking signals maybe just on approach and on departure depending on your perspective and your direction of travel from this station probably do yes yeah, so we'll put another set there so the iron will be loaded it will run down here and then we need to put in a station somewhere around here and as I mentioned previously we're not going to have this straddle the main line it will be kept away and separate now what do we need in terms of platform assignments here well we don't need one for the coal although there will be somewhere on the map a second coal mine yet just here so we might want to bring this coal in as well but we're definitely going to need one for the iron I'd say we will go for one for the coal if we don't end up using it and of course we want one for the steel that is going to be shipped out now the steel is also being used here at Epping Goods Factory however we can handle that via some trucks it's not too far but the steel into the machinery factory will be handled via 
rail means. So, all that being said, we want three tracks here. The trains that will be dropping off the iron will just drop off on the same platform. If that means there's the occasions where they have to wait while one train unloads, then so be it. Similarly, if we bring in the coal, that will go on to a separate platform. And then, of course, the remaining platform will be utilised by the outgoing steel. So all that being told, that means we have three platforms here, all very straightforward. Now we want to connect all of this into our existing freight line. So let's see, can we get that in at a decent lick prior to the tunnel here? I think we should be able to. And if we can get 50, uh, there we go, 53 is more than good enough. And then could we do something like this and have that come parallel whilst retaining a decent overlap? No, we can't, but we can do that just to make the overlap a little bit tidier, even if it does mean the track is bowed in the middle. It's a small price to pay for aesthetics. And then this will double up all the way into that platform there. And then this one will connect in down here. Like that. And if we have, in fact that should be fine. But what we also want is if we're having the iron dropped off on this first platform. Then the train does need a way to get back onto the left hand side once it gets to the eastern freight line. So if we put a cross over there like that, that will handle that. So then the back on here, and as we know this line then links into the, to the northbound track there. So that should work okay. So we don't want one way signals down here because that could get messy. So let's just put a couple of bi-directional signals. One there and one there. We'll then have one just there. We'll also have one there. And we can get away with having one there as well because that will not block in a second iron train that may be wanting to depart because the signal is just prior to this switch here so that train can come down this way without any collisions or potential collisions so that's that now we need to do something similar of course on the other side for the southbound trains here so if we bring that in there and cross over 50 miles an hour, perfect. That signal will need relocating. However, that one is fine where it is. So this signal that we just demolished will now sit just here like that. We'll probably want a set of dwarf signals in this tunnel just for clearing purposes and then we can link these two into here as well and how do we want to do this let's see well they could come parallel for a touch this one will need to be a little shorter and then connect in like that and like that. So if we say that this platform here is the one where our trains are going to be loaded before heading to the, to the steel mill, of course. Sorry, not to the steel mill, to the machinery factory. If we put a second sidings almost a fair just here 
it's very slow but that's okay then we can have one train on the platform and we can have one that waits here on its way in for clearance so we'd want a one-way signal on that one and this would have to be one way as well yes okay and then these two will leave for the time being because we're not going to have anything coming in or out from the, uh, the southerly direction let's just now quickly just smooth off some of those terrain artifacts there that have been generated uh, as we bit into the landscape we want to then put a road in front of the station and link that in and that should be close enough that it links to the steel mill and indeed it does so then now what we can do is set up a line to bring in the iron ore into the Axbridge steel mill so we're coming from this station Epping Central again if you have any naming ideas for any of these stations don't hesitate to let me know and if you come into Axbridge Annex yes but what we want you to do is after Epping we want you to come in that way okay can you not to do that uh, is that a one-way signal yeah that should be two-way now you should be happy yes are all of these signals yes these should be two-way that's my bad I thought I'd had it selected on two-way clearly not so let's put these two well that one could be one-way couldn't it yes this one cannot and yeah sure so you're coming in this way and then coming back out that way back onto the line and heading off back to the to the iron mine which is exactly what we want you to be doing so at epping central we want you to be fully loaded and of course you're loading iron ore and then you're dropping that off over here but you will not be picking anything up for your return journey okay yep yeah, that's reasonable that's uh, that's fine that's working so if we name this then to the epping iron 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 or freight there we go and then we can purchase our locomotive for this one and a47 may be a little overkill so I'm going to drop back down to the A35. But I think we will double head it. Because that is cheaper than one AE47. So yes, we'll have a double headed A35. Cargo wagons, we want the gondola. And if we say have 14, maybe even down to 12, that's a capacity of 96. But if we were to take two of them for 35 million, I think that will work okay. So let's get you assigned onto that line. And that is the Epping Iron Ore Freight. Wonderful. So you'll start heading out, yes. And now what we need is a short line, well, a comparatively short line, that goes from the Axbridge Annex to the George Stevenson station this one we want to be fully loaded at Axbridge where it will be fully loaded with steel he'll not be bringing anything back and this will be the Axbridge steel freight there we go did we do the platform assignments there let's just double check and Maybe give that a slightly darker colour so it makes it that a little bit more prominent on our view, on our screen. No, we haven't. So what we want you to do is come in on two. Well, I suppose it doesn't really matter which. But shall we say perhaps platform number two, which is this first unoccupied one here. So let's find the line. 
So it was Axbridge Steel Freight, yes. So at George Stevenson, if you go to platform two, so yep, you're coming out this way, then rejoining all the way down here. So we have a long approach into the station, which is okay. And then over at Axbridge, yep, you're picking up on a separate platform, but I did say I wanted you on this one here. So let's assign you to platform three, yes. And yep, you're doing exactly what we'd hoped you would do and everything looks above board. So now we can go ahead and purchase the locomotive for that line. For this, we're only going to use one train. We don't need too many, it's only a short distance. And we'll go back again to the A35s. And for the cargo wagons, it is going to be the flat car with side stakes. And I'm saying we'll have nine on this one. That still gives us a good power rating and it only costs 10.6 million, which we can easily stretch to here. So where are we? Let's get the line back in view. Here it is. And you're going on to that line. Okay, so now we should start seeing ore over here. And yes, indeed, we can see that. The ore is starting to be produced and assigned to the platform awaiting pickup. I'm going to assume that the, the iron ore trains are going to come up this way and then take this connection line here before heading into the Axbridge Annex and then heading back down here to get the iron ore. I believe that's what they're going to do and it looks like, yes, here's the first one. So the second can't be too far behind, is that it? No, that is not it. It's going to be down around here somewhere. Where's our depot? I'm, I think, I've, yeah, I have got, got, gone past it. That's the steel train, so you're going that way. Ah, there it is. It's on the bridge. Crossing over the river. Okay, well, that's all looking pretty good to me. We will have to see what sort of line rate. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, we have the Mallard, the BC4, which is a new passenger carriage, a rail bus, and some new trucks. Okay, very, very interesting. Let's go to our mainline trains and just have a look at those carriages because I have actually dropped a couple of names on our mainline trains, and there they are crossing each other on the bridge. So this is quite fortuitous timing. So we have the Queen Elizabeth II and the Lord Nelson. I just went for famous people from uh, history in the United Kingdom, whether they be more modern history or a little bit uh, a little bit older in the terms of Lord Nelson. So yes, again, these are just temporary. If you have any better name suggestions or you want to claim the train for your own and put your own name on it, then that's absolutely fine. Got no problem with that. In the meantime, though, we need to check and see what these carriages are like. So we're using these ones at the moment, which carry 17 with a top speed of 62 miles per hour. These carry 20, have a top speed of 75 miles per hour, and are only 100,000 and change more expensive to operate per year. That's That seems quite a good bargain to me. Let's see, how much would it cost to replace these? So we had 68 capacity, so we probably want to exceed that a little and maybe go to 80. That's a rating of good. And they now get up to 75 miles per hour, which is a, a huge improvement. Uh, 17 million to do that. I think we shall do that. It's given us increased speed and capacity, so it's a, a double win in my book. And the train, uh, sorry, the, the carriages look more appropriate, shall we say? for the locomotive that they are being pulled by I think if you if you know what I'm trying to say they just look more more fitting I think and they're about to roll into Hearn Bay we also had the Mallard of course now the Mallard 
I do believe is a little bit faster than the Flying Scotsman. Let's just verify that. What can the Scotsman do? 75. Oh yes, look at that. The Class A4, the Mallard, can do 90. Its power is greater, the attractive effort is greater. It's an extra 400,000 per year in maintenance and it costs an extra 2 million or so to purchase. So we could feasibly just go ahead and replace the Flying Scotsman with the Mallard. However, I prefer not to because I want to keep the Scotsman running for a little while longer because they are very iconic locomotives after all. So what I'm leaning towards is having an express line that links between every other city. So for example, we'd go from Long Eaton, bypass Hearn Bay and go straight to Axbridge and then perhaps do the same from Epping, bypassing Axbridge, going straight into Hearn Bay. And those lines would be better suited to the Mallard, I believe, because, because of the higher speed, they would be a genuine express. Although, of course, our fastest carriage is the one we just unlocked, the BC4. So we would be limited to the 75 miles per hour. So there is that to bear in mind as well. Would a direct line to Axbridge be viable, though? That's, that's another question. Now, we have just had a train... Oh, that was the, uh, the the local service, so we don't need to concern about that. Yes, would it be viable? Well, 50% of the, the travellers there are going to Axbridge. And what about at Axbridge itself? Let's have a look. Um, no, most are actually going to Hearn Bay, interestingly. I, I imagine most of them would have been going to Long Eaton, but I stand corrected. With the rail buses, we could swap out some of these trains for the rail bus. I'm thinking perhaps this one, because despite how busy this line is, it does struggle to make us any money. Now, I did say, of course, this line isn't about making profit. It really isn't, but if we had to pick one of them to replace with the rail bus, potentially, you'd probably look at the one that's not doing very well in terms of its finances. How about this baby here? Yeah, that's a little more profitable, a little bit more stable. So then, what could we do with this? So if we were just to obliterate that train, and instead, oh, I guess it will be multi-unit, yes, it will, and instead run this, now, I think we'd have to put catenary down, because I don't think we have catenary on this local line, at least not 100% coverage. So if we wanted to get 85 capacity, we could either go to 100, which would give us a rating of good and cost a small fortune at 20 million per vehicle. The acceleration is pretty decent as well. Or we could undersell and go for 80. And obviously that's only going to do even better things for the acceleration. And obviously we have the same top speed whether we have 80 or 100 because that's dictated by the rail bus itself. So that's something to consider and uh, or what we could do is perhaps just save the rail buses and have the rail buses run on this new line that's going to get constructed in the near future. Let me know what you think, ideas and suggestions. Or, of course, it's also perfectly uh, perfectly viable that we just completely ignore that rail bus and wait until a little bit later. There's, there's no harm in that. We don't necessarily have to see every possible locomotive running on the map. So, yeah, let me know what you think. How are we doing over here? I'm guessing that's probably the first iron ore train making its way into Axbridge now. Let's see if we can see the second one. Yeah, you will be the first unless you have a load. No, you do not. So we haven't yet picked up any iron, so these are not going to be making any money at the moment, which is fine. Do we need more? I'm just thinking in terms of how it looks more than anything. We might need a longer consist because that's a 
not the longest in the world for a double headed train so that's something to consider but we'll see how it performs at least we have the scope for expansion and of course if the iron ore trains haven't delivered then we know for a fact the steel train hasn't picked up and I do believe we saw that and I guess this is it just here coming over the bridge yes it is okay well then ladies and gentlemen I think that's where we'll leave it for this episode so I will pause the date progression now and I think well we just saw we have a train heading to the iron ore mine there should be a full load waiting so I'm thinking we'll ride to the iron ore mine before heading back up and then we'll, we'll leave it when we get back to the Axe Bridge Annex so let's hop on board okay then ladies and gentlemen here we are ready and uh, just departing what's this station called was it I can't remember Axe Bridge Annex I think anyway yes we're heading to the to the iron ore mine now so I hope you've enjoyed the episode if you have then please consider hitting that like button down below it really does help it's a great way to show your support and it also helps the video reach a larger and wider audience as well if you haven't subscribed then I'd uh, suggest that you do so because that way you're kept up to date for future video releases as and when they are published you'll find out straight away especially if you hit that bell icon when you are subscribing and for those of you who are interested obviously there is the patreon page as well should anybody be so inclined but for now ladies and gentlemen all that means for me to say is as always take very good care of yourselves it's tata for now